Hello, my name is Jeremy, and I'm here to, today to talk about the solo play of Rising 5, Ruins of Astros. Um, now, this the solo play is very similar to the actual multiplayer cooperative game, because this is a cooperative game. Since you don't control, one, char one person does not control any of these characters, it easily can be played as a solo game. Um, the, reason, the only difference really is, is that instead of having people that I ask for support cards from, it would be uh, from this area, the support area. Um, I almost kind of treat it as part of my hand when it's time to use support. I'm just going to kind of go through some of this, so maybe you're, you're not on my YouTube um, channel right now. You're on jambalayaplaysgames.com, and uh, you just need to know both. I'm working on my YouTube page, so don't fly over there just yet. Um, so let's just get to it. I can take... Three, I can take one of three actions. I can use my cards. By the way, I use cards that are just like my character. So, for example, I have this character here. That is Oracle. I can take two actions. My three options are this. I can move. I can encounter, which means encounter one of these things. I have two spaces for each. Um, sorry, two spaces for each um, of these locations there are three of them the monsters are one through five there are helpers in there that are that pose no threat okay so they pose no threat they only give you benefits and then there's monsters that are from one to five and the ones that are five give you special artifacts and relics that uh, give you quite a few of these cubes these cubes are used to fulfill this area right here to solve the rune puzzle and that is pretty much it, but I want to just go through a little bit and show you like how it plays out. Um, I should also show this here that gives you an automatic clue to solve one of these. You can look up one rune in here, but I'll show you that when the app comes. All right, so what are we doing? I am going to play two actions here. Now, just so you know, this has a... Uh, each one of these guys has special powers. And when you take your two actions, before you do so, you would have to play those two actions, but then you could use your power. Um, I'll just kind of zoom in a little bit. All right, so Oracle. Oracle can manipulate the puzzle. Now, you see there's seven runes here, and there's only four that are part of the solution. Okay, so what he can do is sub one of these runes in and take one out, or he can shift where these runes are. So he can shift these two. So he, either way, he can bring things in and move them out, one in, one out, or he can shift where, the formation of where those are. That's his power. You have Hal. If Hal shares a location, which you can do, like he's doing this right now, he could use Echo's power. So he can use Echo's power, and Echo's power is to move a character to a location. Maybe he wants to move her down here so that they can support each other for this combat. That's just... That's how it works. You have Eli. Eli can move the sundial up. This is the eclipse track. If it goes down here, you lose the game. It's an automatic failure for the game. So she moves it up one. You have Nova, and Nova is part of the, the combat resolve. She can use this to take out a monster one through four. She has to roll the die, and she would have to pick this monster. So let's say, for example, she called it out, and she picked this monster up here that has a combat value of three she can automatically defeat them and gain the benefit. Or if she does not pass, uh, she doesn't pass the, she doesn't qualify, she doesn't hit three or higher, then she doesn't re receive, receive the penalty. Battle works like this. If I act at a location and I have this monster here, um, basically I would roll this die. This has a one through four on it. It also has an eclipse symbol. If I roll that, it's automatic failure, and it moves my track down one, one based on this one being one. I would roll that die, and before I do that, I could ask for support. Now, in a regular player game, regular game, you would ask somebody for support, and they would have to play cards that match that character. So let's say I was, I was a uh, Hal for this turn. I would ask other people, but since I don't, I don't have anybody else. I would ask use these cards. And what they do is they add plus one. I could use one of these and add plus one. I could use two and add plus two. Um, that's called powering up. I also have uh, ways to add to, to my roles by support. So if I have a character who's here with me, that adds plus one. And then I have another character with me. That's plus two. I think I'm good on that, but let's just be safe. I'm going to use this. 
um, and that'll make it plus three. So then all I really need to do is roll a one or fail. All right, I rolled a one. That's four, and then I will receive two of these cubes. That's how battle works, and those are your benefits. That's pretty much the game. You can receive artifacts. Artifacts are more powered up rewards. Um, I'll just show you one or two. This one right here, you get to re-roll the die. This one here, you get two silk cubes. And that's pretty much it. Now, the big threat that you have is that you have to draw cards at the end of your turn. No, did I skip over that? I think I did. <laughs> so you can move, encounter, and the last action is seal the gate, which is actually solving this here. And we'll get to that. Um, you have to draw cards at the end of your turn. You have to at least draw one. Now, I have four cards in my hand. I could draw back up to six. I'm just going to draw one to be safe. No, why not? I'll draw two. And then I have to fill in my support again, which is the solo. Like I said, this is solo. You're pretty much playing your own. Now, why is that risky? In here, let's see, you, are, you can see this deck with up to three, a three, three to five of these Eclipse cards. Um, after you shuffle the deck and put it in there, you slide them in there. And what happens is, is when this comes out, every monster that's out here, the ring that is on there will activate. So you have the ring right here. That activates, and then boom. This uh, this one, let's see, it's got one here, two here, and then three. That moves this track down. One, two, three. That's pretty much how that works. And if it ever reaches the bottom, it's game over. Also, if you ever run out of these cards, the game is over as well. That's pretty much it. So let's just say I've gained enough benefits to seal the gate. I'm going to open up my app here. I'm going to show you my wife's phone here. Let me move it over. All right. And you have the app. Hopefully it's not too bright. All right. So this game, actually, the uh, app is really good. It works every time. It has a tutorial on it. has the rule book in there. And then you hit start. It's even got a little cinematic. Um, it tells you to prepare for the game. It even gives you like a little thematic situation here. I'm not going to play that. Um, but what you do is you actually go and scan this, this thing. So I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to get up here. And what it's going to do is it's going to tell me what runes are and which ones are where. So, for example, this sh this right here tells me, the shiny thing tells me, one of those runes, of the seven runes, uh, one of those four runes is in the correct spot. The other one here with the, like, the little constellation with the little stars. Here, I'll bring it as close as I can without messing up with you. Okay, this tells me that one of those runes is there and it's just not in the right position. These other two... These dark ones, you'll have sort of dark red, and I'll just show you that. Sort of dark red means one of those rooms doesn't belong at all, and then one of these rooms, we just, these two, we don't know necessarily yet. Okay, so that's, that's that. So once again, as you take on these little missions here, and you start to gain more of these silk cubes, as you can see, it mirrors exactly what's on the board right here. These would go away because I used it already, let's say. Um, and then when I get four more of these, I can just tap these as I go. Once I do that, I can guess again. So I'm going to just move some things around here. Let's just futz with this a little bit. All right, let's see. All right, now I'm going to go scan again. All right, so I took some things out of here that belong there. But it looks like I added some things that belong. So these two, so it looks like I added two things that do belong here. And I'm starting to think, hey, 
now that I have this new information, I can start taking things out um, and moving things around. So there's three of these rooms that are in here. They're just not in the right position. Then I got to think of the ones I just took out. And that eventually I'm basically going to start parsing this stuff together. Now, you can look at your last, last couple rounds here so you can figure out, hey, what did I do right or wrong? There's that. You also get clues. For example, this card right here is a clue giver. So I'll automatically get to choose this. I can pick a rune, and then I can, it'll give me a guess and kind of tell me what sign it is. All right, so that's, that's that monster guy. So I know that monster guy, we just don't know if it belongs or not, so then I can actually start putting these little, and these are little chips here to kind of help you figure out, hey, this is this, this is that. Um, you also can X these out. You can flip it over and put in an X. But that's generally the part of the game. Really, only the solo is the biggest. The only difference in the solo is is that you have these support cards. So it's really your choices that uh, it's up to you. And that's it. Uh, I'm not going to play any turns. I think this video is almost way too long. Um, so I, hopefully I helped you make an informed decision about the game. This plays fantastic solo. Um, as a matter of fact, I think you can purchase this as just a solo game. And with that being said, I'm going to close this out. Um, please stay, uh, follow my blog over at jumbleyeplaysgames.com. And the YouTube is coming soon. I may post a link to the YouTube once I have it up and running. Um, until then, um, please stay tuned to my site for coverage of solo games and pretty much everything. That's why it's called Jumbleye Plays Games. Good day, party people.